Here in Israel, we're in the middle of the fall holidays, and here to help us understand how these biblical holidays play out in modern day Israel, we have a special guest, Michael Schneider. Today, we're with Michael Schneider. Um, Michael is a tour guide, a speaker, and a journalist. And, and Michael, actually, um, you have another very important role that's related to CBN Israel. You're the father of one of our dear workers here, Sapir, who is in charge of the Superbook department, Superbook Hebrew, actually. Amazing. That's really cool. Uh, so I just want to welcome you today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. This is great. I think it's a perfect timing also to talk to you because we're like right in the middle of the fall holidays. Yes. And I know that people listen to podcasts like, you know, any time of year, but right now we're in October as we're recording this. And so we want to talk about, you know, where, where it started, you know, where the, the holiday started and why there are different dates every year. The reason why we don't have those different dates, because we're going according to the Jewish calendar and not the regular Christian calendar. And so that's why those dates are falling on different dates every year. For example, we are now in the Jewish calendar in the month of Tishrei. This is for the holi high holidays, they call it, uh, especially starting with the feast Rosh Hashanah, the new year. But mm -hmm. biblically, to see, it is not. It is the Yom Tu'ah, it meaning the day of the sound of the trumpet. And this is beautiful. Uh, I see a beautiful picture in the whole month, you know, uh, that we are right now in the fall. Mm -hmm. Starting with the day of the trumpet, day of the sound of the trumpet, that I believe truly that's the day of the coming of the Messiah, Yeshua. And then we have those 10 days of repentance, Teshuva, we call it, uh, uh, from the day of the tr trumpet all the way to the day, the most holy day, holiest day of uh, the Jewish calendar, and that is the day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. Of course, we believe. We are, you know, we have our forgiveness, of course, through Yeshua, uh, Jesus. But we as Messianic believers, Jewish believers, think that we also have to intercede, to fast, to pray for our people during those days because we are priests. We are called to be priests, according to also the New Testament. And then we're going all the way from the Day of Atonement to the day of the Feast of Tabernacle. So the Feast of Tabernacle, I always say, Sukkot, we call it, mm -hmm. uh, has this universal aspect. That means that it's not only for the Jews. You know, we read in the Bible about those spring feasts, mm -hmm. holidays. Those are events, historical events that already happened. Passover, yeah. the Exodus of Egypt. Then we have Pentecost, Shavuot, seven weeks after Passover. And this is the time where... We believe, you know, the uh, receiving from the, to the Torah mm -hmm. uh, at Mount Sinai happened in those days, uh, 3,300 years back. Right. So those are things that already happened. Now we are in the fall season. And this is a different time also from the biblical view that we are entering in end time stories now. Okay. Speaking from the day of the coming of the Messiah and all the way to the Feast of Tabernacle, and the Feast of Tabernacle, we can see already in Zechariah 14, I think it's verse 16, that all nations will come up to Jerusalem and celebrate with us mm -hmm. and worship here in Jerusalem. And so this is, makes this feast and those days that we are now entering, a few days only, so special for every believers, not only for Jewish believers, for Christian believers worldwide. This is a very special time. And I will say another thing, not only that we believe that all nations, those who remain, that's coming up to Jerusalem and worship and celebrate with us this feast. Interesting, if you read the Bible, and you know, we have those scriptures in the Bible speaking about the feast of the Lord. Uh, in Leviticus chapter 23, and the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, those are main chapters uh, mentioned those feasts. We see there something very unique. 
at the Feast of Tabernacle, we have seven days, right? Where the people of Israel now sitting in those booths, in those tabernacles, building them on the balcony, wherever, uh, remind us the wandering in the wilderness 40 years. That's the idea. But there you see in the scripture, one of the scriptures, you see a beautiful, uh, mention those 70 sacrifices relating to those 70 nations. And I believe, those, um, you know, you see there, they were sacrificing in the first day of the seven days of the uh, Feast of Tabernacle, 13 sacrifices, okay? And then every day, one less. If you count all those, you get 70. This is a picture of the nations, 70 nations, as they mentioned also in the book of Genesis 10, you know, where we have the list of all the nations, ethnic nations, people in the world. And so from the beginning, this feast is a universal feast. That means it is for a Jew, but it's also for a Gentile, mm -hmm. to sell a believer, to, uh, to celebrate. And that makes this feast so special. You know, and you can speak a lot about this uh, feast, you know, from getting out of the houses, you, of your comfort zone, you know, in your simple booth, you know, yeah. covered with this palm branches, beautiful, reminding you always, you know, you are on the way where we believe in the spiritual way, we are on the way to the heaven, you know, the heavenly promised land for those. Jewish people, Israelites in those days, it was to the promised land, the earthly right. promised land. So you have so much symbolism in this whole story of uh, the Feast of Tabernacle and, and uh, of the whole feasts uh, of the Lord, starting with the Passover, okay? And those, especially the three main festivals, the pilgrimage festivals, okay? Mm -hmm. The holidays, Passover, Pentecost and uh, Sukkot Tabernacle, where we are right now, with those end time aspects. And this is the beautiful picture I see in those whole, yeah, period that in time that we're living in right now. Yeah, that's so. You're saying that there was like Passover celebrated something that happened, yeah. and also Shavuot or Pentecost celebrated something that happened. Right. But Tabernacles, there is no precedent for that. That hasn't happened. Right. Right. Wow. Right. This is so special, really. Although you can find also in, for example, at the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of, you know, the weeks, the mm -hmm. seven weeks counted from Passover to yeah. uh, Pentecost. I always, that's one of the, my uh, favorite spots and sites as a tour guide when I bring tourists to the upper room. You know, you have the upper room very close to you in Jerusalem. Yeah. Uh, because it's one room with two stories, major stories, okay? First, the Passover, mm -hmm. Jesus' Last Supper, you know, with his disciples. But the second is also the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. Yeah. We believe more or less that's the same place. And I always say it's not a coincidence that God choose one feast, this feast, to be the birth of the nation of Israel, because according to the Jews, the receiving, the event of this receiving of the Torah uh, was the day when uh, Israel became a nation. Mm -hmm. We know they came as few people, 70 souls, we read, to Egypt, but came out as a nation. Okay, so this is the birth date of uh, the nation of Israel. And we see also the Pentecost, the first church, you know, the, this yeah. pouring out of the Holy Spirit is also known as the birth date or birth of the church, of the body of Christ. And so in my eyes, it's not a coincidence. The birth of the nation of Israel and the church and the body of Christ, because we, we belong together. Jews and Christian are together. And that's the beautiful picture that I see in every spot, you know, when you go with the tourists and... Uh, in the pilgrims to uh, through the streets of Jerusalem, yeah. the Bible becomes alive. Mm -hmm. And you have a message, a spiritual message here and there. And I always tell my people, you know, when you leave Israel, you read the Bible, and that's a guarantee. You will read the Bible in a different way from that moment. 
and that's uh, you know, and they're fascinated because every visit in Israel, it strengthens their faith. It's like recharging their batteries of faith in every visit, and they, again, they will read the Bible from a different point of view, you know, depth. Wow. And, uh, you know, one of the major or main response or, uh, res um, yeah, response that I get after a tour, you know, Michael, they say, from now on, I start reading the Old Testament. You know, there are too many Christians worldwide that are still reading only the New Testament. But you cannot see the whole picture without the Old Testament. It's, I always call it, it's like a bestseller mm -hmm. with two chapters. If you, you know, you never will understand the whole picture if you only read in the second chapter. And that's the same with the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that's one of the things my goal is to reach um, uh, for, you know, the tourists when they come to Israel to see that it's, you know, from now, now on they will read the, the whole yeah. Bible from Genesis 1 to all Revelation. You know, there's um, Bible translators, a group, I think it's with uh, Wycliffe, yeah. uh, Bible translators that they come here every year. And they bring their translators from different um, countries in Africa, from all over the world, but countries that you know where they don't have language for some of the some of the stuff that's in the Bible. So they bring them to places like, for instance, like maybe they've never seen a pomegranate. Okay. Um, and then also like you know when they talk about like the rocky when when Jesus talks about like the parable as well. Um, where they see like the different soils, like, oh, here would be the rocky soil. And, and then they begin to understand. But yeah, there's so much um, imagery right. in the Bible. Right. In, in, and also it's it's a book, you know, it's it's not like um, two books. It's one book, right. you know, that that has 66 chapters. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like you said, that's a very important uh, for people to read the entire i even say that every bible school worldwide that should have in their program their you know itinerary whatever a visit in israel mm -hmm. you will understand the whole you know the stories in the bible in a different way you know you see the distance from the sea of galilee or going down to the you know the, the jordan river or the way that jesus and his disciples made so many times from from Nazareth to the Sea of Galilee, then from the Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem. And right. the Samaritan woman seemed, you know, you will see that on the spot. That's true. Like, yeah, also the distances. Right, like the distances. when they walked from here to there, you know, to understand where they came the from. The geography, the geography, yeah. everything, the smell, everything. Uh, so it should be really like, a, you know, a caller that they should... The, the Bible schools where, you know, have a visit in Israel mm -hmm. and to see those, meet people. That's very important. One of my major thing in the, when I guide people here in Israel, meet. Don't, it's not only for your camera. You know, you should step from the, from the bus, go and meet the people and uh, talk to people and encourage them, especially in those days. Now, we're in the times of war. Mm -hmm. And tourists, tourists are not coming, so most of them, okay? And so that's why I always say, if you don't come, I come to you, okay? I try to, in my speaking tours worldwide, I try to bring them a small Israel, you know? But uh, I had a, a week ago a, a solidarity group, okay? Those are unique uh, groups for this time right now. Mm -hmm. It's not any more classic tours that we are used to do right. back to back and this time I should now be on a bus okay somewhere in the Sea of Galilee or on a boat ride with uh, Daniel Kaumel you know on the boat mm -hmm. uh, this messianic captain okay beautiful things that happen you know experience you have uh, during those two, uh, trips but um, now they come to support and they came you know I had 25 brave Germans and Swiss uh, coming last week for eight days. You know, I needed to change the program, the itinerary from time to time, because you don't enter those 
risky areas, dangerous areas, but still we met people, mm -hmm. especially those victim, uh, victims and also families of the hostages. Oh, wow. At the hostages square in Tel mm -hmm. Aviv, for example. Okay. Or meeting other, you know, who are uh, affected by this war, uh, displaced people. And so it's unique, mm -hmm. but I think it's uh, important that they all still should come, you know, yeah. as much as possible to come. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there are a lot of areas now of the country that are closed military zones. And even though the Galilee might not be closed, I imagine that businesses are suffering because they're yeah. based on tourism. But also the Galilee is getting a lot of sirens and a lot of rockets from both That's Lebanon right. and right. from the east as well. Right, from the east also. That's what... Uh, Everything north from up to Sea of Galilee mm -hmm. is forbidden. Okay, it's not any more possible as a tour group to enter. Yeah, the beautiful sites like Caesarea Philippi or uh, Tel Dan and all those beautiful areas, uh, the Golan Heights, Nimrod Fortress. Right, the Nimrod Fortress. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, this is on standby now, right now. Okay, until the war is over, we believe soon, not too long. Because I think the, you know, tourists they're waiting to come. They want to come. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you hear it. They call you. You know, when it's good to come again. And now everything from last year, twenty three, moved to twenty four, and now everything moved to twenty five already. Mm -hmm. And now I heard already for cancellation in twenty five in spring. We never know. And this is just two years after COVID. And, or maybe even just, not even two years right. full. And tourism was just recovering. And people were saying that after, you know, there was, the record year was uh, 2019. Yeah. And then and there were about 5 million, just over right. 5 million right. tourists. And then in, um, then there was COVID. Oh, uh, it was, 2020 was on track to break all records. Yeah. And then COVID, of course, everybody, it, that tanked completely. And then people were saying, like, in the industry, like, okay, we're going to get back, like, 2024, it will be, like, we'll be back to pre-COVID levels. Right. But then October 7th, 2023, and it's been just over a year now. Yeah. And um, it's not closed down, whereas no. COVID, the country was closed right. for a long periods of time. But now it's just uh, not pleasant to come. Right. And many airlines... Foreign oh, airlines yeah, are not right. coming. That's right. We have the El Al, the Israeli airlines. Mm -hmm. Thank God we have them. Yeah. They're still coming. They're still flying. Mm -hmm. And so the people should book their companies, you know, the airlines, Israeli airlines yeah. to come. But still, we have also Israelis stuck abroad, as you know. Right. right? They cannot come back for the holidays. So who you prefer, the Israelis bring them first back or the tourists? Wow, that's tough. Yeah. But it is possible to come right It is now. possible. It's not closed. It's not closed. And I find enough biblical sites even now mm -hmm. in this time, okay? We will do changes always during the itinerary, okay? But still, there are enough spots. You know, you go more than to the desert. You go more to, to south from Israel, Jerusalem. Uh, so you don't go to those risky areas, dangerous yeah. areas in the north next to the borders. Although, again, I was with my group now at the Gaza border, okay? Mm -hmm. The whole area, all those who were, you know, affected by by this uh, attack, this yeah. massacre, brutal ma massacre on uh, October 7th, uh, Kibbutz Berry and uh, Kfar Aza, all those in the, this burned cars, the vehicles, mm -hmm. okay, this cemetery of this, we call, we met people there, we spoke to those people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Nova Party uh, uh, area. Yeah. So we came to the, to encourage those people to pray at those spots. So again, those tours or those visitors or tourists who are coming at this time, it's a different, you know, um, experience. Yeah, it's a different type of trip. And it's actually... It's a totally different uh, type of, yeah. Yeah, and it's an opportunity to see different Right. different sides of Israel right. you know right. it's maybe not the historic but also you know the modern and 
uh, meet different people, see different sites. I mean, you know, before October 7th, I don't think many people went south of Sterot. No, ever. No. You know, there was, there'd be no reason, you know, yeah. to really go there. It should be, it be, slowly, slowly, it becomes a touristic site now. Yeah. Never, it, before that, nobody came to those places. Now oh. it's become interested. You know, you have this view, a lookout view, you know, from uh, Sderot, okay, from a hill over Gaza. Wow. Having seen live the bombing. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, because there was just an uh, operation, a military operation north of Ga uh, Gaza. And we were there and standing and seeing that live. You saw that? Yeah. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So That's I think crazy. they came back. You know, one of my main goals on every trip is after seeing all those uh, things here, to be an ambassador in their country for Israel, because we're lacking of good ambassadors for our sake, you know, for our, uh, who s will speak out in their churches, in their schools, in, in universities, in Germany, wherever, you know, abroad in Europe, and speak, you know, out for Israel. They saw it, you know, they are witness, they've been at the spot, and now they can speak out to their communities, to their places, and see, tell the truth about Israel. And there is only one truth, you know, and... Uh, I always say, you know, and this is Jesus himself, but yeah, you know, you can understand the, the situation in different ways, but being here makes a difference, I think, mm -hmm. makes a difference. You know, you can speak so much from outside of Israel, you know, but one visit in Israel makes the whole difference. Yeah, and like you said, it does bring the Bible to life right. as well. So it's something you take with you forever. Right. Now, we, we were talking before about the holidays, and it's interesting because you, you know, you, how you explained Sukkot and the Feast of Tabernacles and how there isn't a precedent for it. And it was interesting because I was thinking there is, like, for Passover, uh, it aligns with, like, the Christian holiday of Easter, right. you know, and, and then um, Shavuot and Pentecost, which is another Christian holiday. There is no, no. Christian holiday in the fall because even Hanukkah aligns with Christmas right. for the most part. Right. So, what do you make of that? It it shows me again that this, this holidays, uh, fall holidays that we are now entering, are special, yeah, unique, and because maybe it shows also that because you don't find anything related in the Christian, you know, uh, religion, um, maybe it's something still open for the future mm -hmm. and time. I already mentioned the the end time aspect of. This uh, holidays, you know, that one day they will, the nation will come up and all this. But this is the only connection that I find with those nations, out, you yeah. know, the Gentiles. And this will come. And that we believe, truly believe that those, as those other two already happened mm -hmm. and fulfilled, no doubt that this last one in the fall holidays, and Feast of Tabernacle, the main, yeah, will also be fulfilled yeah. and happen. And so, also um, explain for people who haven't necessarily been to Israel, especially during Sukkot, um, that what the country is like during Sukkot, because I, I, it's something I never experienced until I moved here, which was over twenty years ago. Like I've no, I had no idea. In normal days, or in those days we are living right now. Oh, it, when I it, guess when normal normal days, like um, just the fact that, like you were saying, uh, that you have the the sukkah. Like right. I don't even think people know the sukkah, the booth, the, you know, the tabernacle huh. you have on the balcony. You <laughs> build this um, with your children, with the family. It's a family thing, and you know, in normal days, the city should be packed with people. You know, full of people. Not only. Uh, Christian coming up, as we know, we have this Christian tabernacle mm -hmm. by the Christian embassy, International Christian Embassy, but and with a beautiful uh, Jerusalem march, as you know, coming uh, walking through the street of Jerusalem, showing their solidarity and love to Israel with their banners, beautiful, and the flags. This would probably not happen this year, okay, but in right. the regular and normal years that's a beautiful picture of the feast of tabernacle of mm -hmm. sukkot and then you you know um, 
the, 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 it's not only the Gentiles are coming up, the Jews, because it's a pilgrim, a pilgrimage feast also for the Jews coming up to Jerusalem. And people from all over the world, Jewish people, you know, American Jews, who come only for the feast to right. the city of Jerusalem to celebrate those feasts. So you have also them. So the city is in normal days packed, mm -hmm. really. You know, yeah, I can testify to the traffic. Traffic, live in even the, you know, uh, the streets in uh, mm -hmm. the old city. Close uh, to cars. Uh, right. Yeah. T even human traffic. You can't even. Right. Oh, the days of the priestly blessing. Priestly blessing. Yeah. You know, uh, 100,000 people. Right. At the Wailing Wall, uh, mm -hmm. praying, receiving the blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even now in the, the last day, uh, nights, at the Western Wall, we experienced so many people coming up to uh, ask for forgiveness, yeah. shouting, you know, Lord of forgiveness, slichot, Adona yeah. slichot, Lord of forgiveness, forgive us, have mercy of it. You know, interesting, the spirit and this, you know, to experience this event, this uh, mass prayer in, in at the Western Wall, mm -hmm. it's unique. Yeah. It's really unique. You don't find it. You know, I uh, I mentioned in my news about the Day of Atonement, right? When that's the climax, that's the peak, right, of this whole holidays, of the high holidays. Where you find in the whole world that for one day everything stops, the traffic, everything stops, it's closed, you know, mm -hmm. and and the people looking for, you know try to reconcile with God, mm -hmm. looking for forgiveness. One day, a whole day, a whole nation for one day, sh shut, closed, yeah. sealed, everything. This is unique. It's, it's extraordinary. I mean, it's unbelievable. I've never heard such silence in a right. city in my life. When you wake up on the morning of Yom Kippur, right. it starts like it starts in, in the evening and the fast. Right. And, Traffic already begins to wind down, but in in um, most Jewish cities, in most neighborhoods and cities across Israel, yeah. everything shuts down. The traffic lights go off. The police barricade the streets so that you know nobody drives. Yeah. And it's actually even more than that. It is the day for every kid right. in the, in the country to ride exactly paradise to see those empty roads, empty streets. Even the highway, yes, uh, you know, to Yalashmona, the also, you know, the A1 to, to Jerusalem yeah. and Tel Aviv, uh, empty. On their bikes, skateboards, right. everything, just everybody's out. And... Yeah, for the children, it's paradise. Yeah. And uh, for us, you know, unfortunately, this year they uh, came with those uh, special restrictions that they asked for, you know, the people not too much to come to those, uh, you know, to gathering, you know, yeah. at the synagogue. Oh, right, because of, right. in case of a siren, siren. people yeah. have to get to shelter. But in general, the, the Yom Kippur, the, the, the atonement this year was the same. Yeah. You know, empty road, uh, streets. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is really special, you know, that you don't find it in nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. Uh, so this is also one right. of the unique, especially in this time of war. And I hope the people are, I still believe that some truly mean it when they pray for repentance, mm -hmm. pray for forgiveness, you know, and not having this all just as a tradition, yeah. as the majority does. Okay. I still want to believe that some really mean it mm -hmm. when they pray for forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Especially in those days, I, I'm sure it. I did not see the statistic, but uh, I'm sure that this year, because of the war, mm -hmm. more came or more fasted, more prayed, maybe uh, okay, because people are looking for answers. Yeah, the war. It's interesting. It, it's had, I I think, um, opposite effects on some people who have the reaction that, that also many had during the Holocaust, which right. is there can't be a God. Right. Where is God? Why, yes, where is God? God? Why would he let this happen? But I met the parents of, of a hostage uh, last week, and they 
they said, uh, we've become religious since then. And um, um, they said, and, uh, you know, because of their this situation that they are praying more and they are seeking more. So, so I imagine that, yeah, that I, I, more or, people I are like them. Stories that people were miraculous saved or, you know, uh, came out from this massacre, of, uh, you know, and somehow God saved them. And from that moment, they start, you know, become a religious. Or, oh, yeah. Okay. And then you hear amazing stories also from Messianic Jews living there, how God mm -hmm. saved them during that time. Yeah. When you already the, the, the terrorists, Hamas terrorists were in their, in their house. Yeah. And they somehow did not see the security room, the bomb shelter that they were inside. Just blinded, you know, interesting. I so, think I know who you're talking about because we interviewed them. Really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, those are also things that happen. Mm -hmm. On the other side, maybe some are losing their faith. Mm -hmm. Where's God? Yeah. And this is the, yeah, the, the second worst massacre or a catastrophe that happened to the Jewish people right? since, since the, the Holocaust. Holocaust. So yeah. where's God again? Yeah. But we know that God is in control. I always say, I always say, uh, and he, he was not surprised. Maybe we were surprised right. on October 7th, but he was not surprised. Mm -hmm. And that give me, uh, give me uh, much comfort uh, during those days now. What is your favorite or most special site in the country? You only have one. Only one? Only one. Only yeah. one. That's I difficult. told you it was going to be a challenge. I know, I know. I know. If I give you top three, it'd be easy. Yeah, so, that would be. I very much like Shiloh, Shiloh. Really? Really. Okay. And then Why? maybe also the city of David, okay? But Shiloh. Something special about this place. We know that this is a, was the place where the tabernacle for a long time, 369 years before Jerusalem, you know, that was the spiritual center or capital of the 12 tribes of Israel, okay, in the, in the mountain of Samaria. Uh, Shiloh, because of the amazing story of Samuel and Hannah, uh, you know, and, and the priest Eli. And by the way, we have a, a new, very attractive thing there right now, uh, those yes. the red heifers. I was going to say, yeah. Okay. So again, I really like this place. Mm -hmm. And somehow, yeah, you know, we know that we bless people doing the tour, uh, touring and the guiding, but there are some spots that I also been blessed always at the spots, okay? The unique sp uh, places. And this is one of them, Shiloh. Always, okay. Shiloh, then another uh, spot in the city of the old city of Jerusalem, okay, mm -hmm. that speaks to me. Uh, the Bethesda pools, for example. Okay. Very much. Is that by Saint Anne's? Right, Saint Anne. Okay. Uh, why Jesus is telling you, you know, do you want to be well? What a kind of question is it? Of course, you want to be well. It kind of does, okay. But if Jesus mentioned and calling you and asking, do you want to be well? It means all. Not only spirit, uh, physically well, you know, mm -hmm. health. It means also in the spirit, you know, uh, 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 totally well. Then get rid of your habits or you know sinful habits and all everything. And this is not everyone was ready to do it. The whole deal, you understand what I mean? So this that I believe is the meaning of: Do you want to be well? Not only physical, everyone want to be physical. Well, this could be then a stupid question, but Jesus meant, when he meant it, all, all of you, spirit, soul, and body. So there are spots and sites that I, you know, I'm totally in it. Oh, that's great. Oh, really? That's right. So you don't get tired of, st of seeing the same spot. No, you always learn and add, you know, uh, more and more. All right, we can't gloss over that you said the new attraction in, in as Shiloh or Shiloh is the red heifers. You might have to expound upon that a little bit. The red heifers, you, you read it in the book of Numbers, chapter 19, the whole issue of you know, that was a 
a way to cleanse a person from and purify a person from when he got in touch with the dead. Mm -hmm. And for that, you need the red heifer. You, and more accurate, you need the ashes. Ashes of the, the red ashes heifer. ashes combined with water. That was was the way to be cleansed and purified. And now, and again, the Jewish people taking it very serious. A matter of building a temple, a right. third temple. You know, we are. Uh, we think, you know, some believe it's only a spiritual, but again, in, among the Jewish people, they truly believe there will be a physically new temple, yeah. rebuilt. Not for, you know, we have a temple institute in old city where all the instruments, you they're, know. Yeah, they're getting ready, they're ready. for it. You know, yeah. the last time they told me, we just wait for the call from Netanyahu, our pre uh, prime minister. Oh my gosh. To come up to the temple. Wow. But... So they're taking it very serious. For that matter, we need the red heifer, okay? Mm -hmm. Exactly as mentioned in the Bible, two years old, you know, totally... Totally red, red. right? No blemish, no, right? no white fur right. or anything, yep. And now we have, I think, three. Oh, there were five. Or five. Maybe two Maybe. became... Yeah, ineligible. disqualified. <laughs> but in any case, I heard one, the ashes of one red heifer can last for right. hundreds no, of years. That, and, and according to the rabbinical writings, it should be then now the 10th red heifer. We had already oh. nine, and I listed them up once, okay? okay, from the time of Moses all the way up, okay, nine. And it mentioned that when the 10th, mm -hmm. it's also a time of the Messiah, coming of the Messiah. Okay. So that's why they are so... They're controversial because they're so different sides are using them for their uh, their beliefs or right. their their political and they had already in Shiro some ceremonies you know how you know to you have to sacrifice at the end this yes. animal yes yeah. now they so can from now on now it's they could count down it constantly becomes it's a real source of uh of conflicts even among israeli right. jews right. like it's not just right. yeah so it'll yeah. be interesting to see where that goes red heifer it's a it's an issue it really is an issue really yeah but the, you know the tourists the, the christian who come they love those stories yeah they're interested what about the temple when will be the temple ready? Mm -hmm. When you know when this happened? Will this happen? And this are stories that I will tell them. And I, my favorite spot is next to the Golden Gate, the Eastern Gate. Mm -hmm. Okay, the sh shut closed. Right of the old city of Jerusalem. Right. Mm -hmm. above the Kiron Valley, the so-called Jehoshaphat Valley, mm -hmm. and there I stalk end time, talking about those two mountains and the two valleys mm -hmm. still have the end time stories okay, okay. mount moriah temple mount yeah mount of olive the return mm -hmm. of christ coming back and then the two valleys in the north the so-called armageddon valley mm -hmm. jezreel valley uh, where all the armies encamped and then go up to jerusalem and then the last judgment of god in the valley of jehoshaphat kidron so there are still two mountains, two valleys, and then time. And it's all supposed to happen there. Yeah. It's all supposed to happen there, right here in Jerusalem. So that's right here why, in Jerusalem. That's why people should come visit. That's why. And that's, you know, that's when that happened, I believe that's the time when we read those beautiful scriptures from Micah 4 and then uh, uh, Isaiah 2 when all nation will come up, mm -hmm. right? To the mountains of Jerusalem, to the mountains of the Lord. Yeah. This is the time. Yeah. 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 And normally this would be the time we would see a lot of tourists. Very but, much. Um, Very much. It's going to be, well, it's actually not too long from Corona days, from COVID, that we felt the, the lack of um, the foreigners, tourists visiting the country at this time. So... Well, it looks like we're facing it again this time. Yeah, unfortunately. But they will come and I'm, yeah, I believe, you know, I'm always optimistic. Yeah. And we should be, you know, because we have the word of God and it shows us that this won't end. You know, I always tell the people, 
uh, when we read the Zechariah, right? In Zechariah 12, we talk about this war, the last end time war when all nations would, uh, would come up and to fight against Israel and J Jerusalem. Thank God the book of Zechariah didn't end with the war chapters. Yeah. Two chapters later, we have this beautiful chapter uh, where it tells us when the nation will come up for this time to worship and to celebrate with us this Feast of Tabernacle. Again and again, you see, it is so unique, mm -hmm. those feasts that we are now going into uh, the fall holidays. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just encourage people to come, especially during this time, because again, at that time, in this time to come, it's, a, you, you, you know, the meaning of it is so special. I told them, my group now, also, when you speak to the Israel, Israelis on the street, they are thankful, they are grateful that you came. You know, they were, even they uh, told us always, we cannot understand why should, why did you come in times of war? But then they say, this is the true friend of Israel. In those days of, you know, of war and uh, at that time to come to Israel, it shows who is the true friend, friend of Israel. And again, come to Israel. That's great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for for taking the time. I know also you um, look, thank God that you also have the opportunity to go out and, right. and speak right. uh, when times are slow right now. But I just want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us and to share your insights about everything we're going through from from the holidays um, to the war, the economy, and even the red heifers. Um, <laughs> it came even to this <laughs> issue, the red heifer, right? <laughs> yeah, this is really, and thank God we'll see, God willing, uh, the whole February I will be in the States, mm -hmm. speaking in many churches there, mm -hmm. uh, traveling from one uh, state to another state. Yeah. Oh, wow. God is opening new doors and that's right, because what people may not know is that normally you're speaking in German. Right. Uh, that's a, that's it, my it's main right, uh, right. Yes. mother tongue. Right. But I lived for a while in Kentucky. Yeah, in Kentucky. I know. I know. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I respect. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, so. I I see that God will open our new doors and our. We'll use those doors and to speak about Israel. And again, I will speak about this, what is going on here. Mm -hmm. But my main goal in the whole, my messages are to glorify God. Mm -hmm. All what he does, you know, uh, that he is in control and everything and sovereign. And so that's even in those bad times right now, God is there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... That's my main goal. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much. And I want to say Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Um, and have a great Sukkot. Thank you. You too. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks.